Hello humans, this is Random Guy and welcome to the Random Channel. Haven't I haven't been uploading for a little while actually. Uh, the thing is that my PC, the RAM kind of got fucked up and I could not start my PC and now that I finally was able to, well, the PC is just too slow. My computer is too slow and it just won't work at all. And uh, I'm going to be buying a new one in like a month or two, so I won't be able to upload Oblivion until then. But I found this new game on the phone, so I like, you know, uh, let's play this. I mean, I played it a little bit and it's actually really fun. So let's try it out. All right, so let's begin. So this is the first screen of the game. So the, basically the game is like a visual novel mixed with an RPG. So you make choices. Uh, there's a story and uh, as you can see on the top there's life, mana, gold and morale. I have played it a little bit just to get the essence of the game. So you're going to probably finish this game at some point. The problem is that uh, in a week or so I have my exams and considering the amount of chapters that they are. Uh, how many are there? Nine. So yeah, it's going to be a bit difficult. But we'll see. That's the first screen. You're a young wizard seeking treasure and glory. You're walking alone a path in a forest. One day's journey from Ring City, your beloved home. Night has just fallen and you're thinking about how it might be a good idea to find a campsite. After all, you're in goblin territory. It's dangerous to walk, travel in the dark. Suddenly you smell something awful. Rugged and old. Are you responsible for that outrageous smell? You ask the warrior striding ahead of you. So basically that's the other dude that's accompanying us. He's a warrior, we are a mage, or wizard, whatever. Pray no, I'm always downwind from my companions when I squeeze the bellows. When he speaks in such a weird and nice little tone. Okay. You realize that you have never encountered this stench before and it is close and perhaps it's your imagination but is that muffled breathing you just heard? What do you do? So, let's see. We are a wizard, right? And we are in goblin territory. And we smell uh, a fuck all stench. So, well, it's not that big a deal when you smell stenches in a forest filled with goblins. Uh, there could just be a rotting corpse or whatever. They might might have killed someone. But I heard muffled breathing. I'm not going to take it up as my imagination. And I'm going to shout a warning to Reginald. It's an ambush, you shout. Startled. Reginald springs off the ground like a jackrabbit. They were sitting? Wait, hold on. They were sitting? I thought they was walking. Alright. What does that button do exactly? Oh, okay. Hmm, all right. It is an ambush, you shout. Startled, Reginald springs off the ground like a jackrabbit, his chain armor jingling. Just then, out of the brush rush several snarling goblins, their eyes glowing green in the murky darkness. They charge with their short spears. See, I told you, uh, there's, a, there's a high possibility. I mean, these things usually... Um, the choices in this game are usually uh, fair to some extent. I mean, you can anticipate them. And if you follow your gut, then you might able be able to do it. But if you... Last time I was playing, I was thinking too much. I was like analyzing every little bit in this. And that just ended up... Uh, well, it ended up bad, let's just say that. Because some of the things are just way too illogical. Um, let's see. Okay, so the goblins come in and uh, mana decrease two, decreases two. With an arcane word and a flourish of one hand, you send a bolt of fire into the leader of the charge, who drops to the ground thrashing in flames. Ragnarol hacks another down with his sword. The remaining three run away, whooping and yipping. Their cries are joined by others from the dark forest all around you. Many calls from far too many goblins to fight toe to toe. It's a hunting party, probably tracking wild game. We humans are a delicacy, much better than mutton. Really? I mean, I've heard that uh, human meat tastes like chicken meat. But, like, it's not that good. It's not that tasty or whatever. 
and also that I've heard that um, well obviously uh, if not prepared properly the diseases can be transferred to the person eating and not to mention that the human body tends to contain provide a lot more fat than uh, anything else so if you eat human meat then uh, more than likely you're gonna encounter i mean you're gonna gain a lot of fat so there'll be a lot of uh, fat in it so it's preferable not to eat humans you know also also society tends to not uh, appreciate such activities because you know you you are going to get human meat by killing someone so that's that you regard the two dead goblins on the ground Dead goblins are worth 10 gold pieces per head in the city. Luckily, you don't need to carry their heads around. The city authorities will accept their left ear. Okay, this is a bit of a difficult choice. I mean, I would want gold. I mean, gold is always good. But how far are they? By others from the dark forest all around you. Yeah, that's a bit of a that's a bit of a difficult situation. I mean, I don't think uh, red goblins are worth ten gold pieces per head on the ground. City like you are deemed to carry their heads around the city world except their left ear. That's a bit of a stretch. But if they ran away, they wouldn't exactly come back immediately, would they? I mean, they, it will take time to gather a hunting party. It will take at least a few seconds even if they run to another patrol and say like, look, humans over there. So they would come over here. God damn it, I'm so fucking... Ugh. No, fuck it, let's just run. I don't think uh, there's the time for this shit. The forest is crawling with goblins. It is time to flee, you shout. And the two of you run into the forest in a direction from which you do not yet hear their cries. What now? Ragnall asks. Panting after you... You have run for a stretch. Certainly there are excellent places to hide in the forest. If we can just survive till morning. Exactly. The goblins may have hunting dogs or even wolves and their own sense of smell is keen, you say. You might climb a tree then. That would at least be defensible. You wish to be tread, you wish to be tread like a fox with goblins barking underneath. If you wish a position that is both defensible and allows some freedom of movement, you should hasten to castle in Vernus. It is near. You could fortify ourselves behind those walls, Ragnall says. You frown. It is a fortress, yes, but inhabited by what? God knows but what man of creature may have taken a presence in that ruins over the years. Okay, so I have three options. Hide in the forest, climb a large tree, and garrison in the ruin. I'm sort of following the exact same path that I did for my last run because I'm not sure what's the best course of action and uh, yeah I mean it wasn't exactly fun the ending I got I'm not even sure if there are multiple endings to the chapter but you know what let's let's uh, oh man I don't want to get us in the ruin it may seem like the most appropriate option but things go south in the ruins so you know what, let's try it. Let's try uh, other options. Hide in the forest. Life decreases when hunting party or not, the goblins will have their work cut out for them, finding you in this dense forest. You can just hold out until morning. Those little sun-hating beasts will be driven back to their holes. You know this region well enough. To be certain, there are no rivers thereby in nearby, but Reginald hopes to find at least a stream for the two of you to wade through to destroy your scent of trail. Unfortunately, you cannot find one even after hours of running through the forest. You're exhausted. Meanwhile, the howls of your pursuers become even louder. At this point, you have found another trail. You decided to use it for speed, hoping your long legs can at least give you some distance from the smaller goblins. The two of you dash up to a fork in the road. The path to the right is apparently seldom used since it is nearly out overgrown. Ragnall believes it is the path that leads to the castle ruins. The path is... But your left is clear and you are in your favor. Okay, yeah, it is it's like, it's, uh, start the chapter over. Uh, what, what is it doing? Sometimes it's necessary when critical starts to too low from a checkpoint or sometimes you just want a fresh start. Yeah, uh, what it's doing is that um, 
is going to force me into the same thing. I was thinking maybe that uh, if you took a different choice, it's going to let you go another direction and choose another choice. But it would seem that uh, the game is uh, deciding for you. So you, you're going to end up in the castle anyway. So it's pointless. So shout out a warning to him. Let's cut off the ears. Get the ears, get the ears. This, this time let's get the ears. Aren't they supposed to be 20? Get the ears, get the ears. You exclaim, exclaim as you pull out your razor sharp dagger from your belt. For a second, your sometimes slow-witted warrior sidekick doesn't understand. But as you start swimming at the first ear, he gets the idea, fishes out his own dagger. Soon you have a bloody goblin ear stuffed in your pocket. Ragnarol has one of his own. Nasty? Very. However, 10 gold pieces are nearly 6 months of wages to a common laborer. So you're willing to take a hit. And who the fuck is revving the fucking engine outside? And the... Ah, uh, man. The area 11 is just too loud. It's like so early in the morning. And still people are just fucking around all over the place. Throwing shit and stuff. It's annoying. It's annoying. <clears throat> Alright, so... And then 10 gold pieces are nearly 6 months. Okay, okay, okay. so if uh, Regnal picks up anything, it doesn't add to my gold. I was thinking, he said uh, 10 gold pieces per uh, year. When are goblins that big of an issue? Like, are they so difficult to deal with? And are they that big of an issue that one year, uh, one year is uh, enough to pay off like six months of a labor's wage like that's insane dude that's way too much i mean by the end of this chapter i have so much fucking gold then uh, that i couldn't pay for like months and months all right uh to a common laborer so you are willing to take the hit but now regnal asks certainly there's excellent places to yeah yeah the same thing yeah same thing let's go towards the garrison and the ruined walls Castle Avernus is near. Let's take refuge behind those stone walls. Okay, that's just fucked up. Like in the last sentence, he said that the castle is near, that we can uh, go there. And we are like, no man, the castle could have actually what type of, uh, all types of fucking creatures living in it. And now in the next sentence, I'm like, yeah, ca Castle Avernus is near. Like he doesn't know about that. We just stole his line. Goblin hunting calls echo from all around in the forest as the two of you dash up the path a hundred meters or so. When you find a fork in the road, the path to the right appears to be seldom, used since it is nearly overgrown. The path to the left is clear. You think you see firelight down that way. Could this fire belong to goblins or if you're lucky, is it campfire of another friendly adventuring party? Now here's the thing, uh, first of all we are in a goblin territory, so if there was any, it was any adventurer around, they wouldn't, uh, uh, you know, light a fire. We didn't light a fire considering we were sitting, so that's uh, the most logical option would be to run towards the castle. Not to mention last time I ran towards the fire, <laughs> it turns out it's a goblin. So castle, never question a wizard, that's kind of a weird thing to say. In a foolishness to Castle Avernus and her blessed walls, you proclaim. Regnal raises his fist. Yes, may the puny bodies break against our stone defenses. After a minute of stumbling down what is best described as a game of trail, you see, you, you see the shadowy husk of the ruins in the moonlight ahead. Unfortunately, the battle cries of your pursuer are closer than ever. When you look back over your shoulder, you see glowing eyes lidless green bulging out like small onions and because there's so many types of goblins you you can barely keep up like is there there's just too many types of goblins like these are the same goblins type from i think uh, goblin slayer the that's an anime if anyone's heard of it it's pretty damn popular at the moment i haven't watched it but i did see the rape scene that was in the show and uh, the goblins do look like they do not have any lids in that show. Okay. Uh, they do not appear to be having any sort of um, eyelids. When there's other types of goblins, like in Overlord, there's a different type of goblin. Uh, 
you know, the thing is that uh, different type of goblins uh, work differently, completely differently. Like uh, in Overlord, they never really explain how goblins work. Uh, because you never see a female goblin in uh, Overlord. Uh, and they're never shown to be reproducing. They're just shown as, a, yes, here's a goblin. Or like, uh, get, the goblins get summoned. And they usually seem to be hostile rather than anything else. So, I would say Overlords or Goblins are like... Uh, Overlords also an anime, by the way. Um, Overlords Goblins are uh, just the most typical RPG-styled Goblins, I would say. Then there's uh, the time I got reincarnated as a slime type goblins. Um, and also, uh, the the goblins in the Overlord universe are a bit uh, different because when they level up, considering uh, one of the, 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 well, the Carne village, I believe that's the name of the village where uh, Henry and other people are staying, that village, uh, when they uh, when he leaves the, that horn that causes a, a huge... Uh, amount of goblins to show up they all seem to be fairly intelligent so i would say like uh, depending on uh, the level of a goblin in that world their intelligence also seems to shift but the reproduction part has never been shown properly or any in any form have never been shown they have never had much of an indication either um, the the time i got reincarnated as slime type goblins other type of goblins that actually have females in their clan and um, they are intelligent from the start and they just grow stronger as uh, they level up uh, so th they are a more of a society sort of goblins that can resemble humans to some extent and they're not that ugly looking either the the goblin slayer goblins are the most um, usually used in dark fantasy type settings they're usually shown as uh, that these goblins cannot uh, do not have females in their um, in their species, so they have to use other species as females. So, uh, so usually in um, <clears throat> in the Goblin Slayer anime, it is shown that they rape a girl and they show inside that the multiple goblin children. So basically, goblins capture other uh, species as females and rape them. I'm saying species instead of humans specifically because I have seen some other dark fantasy type shows that actually show that uh, goblins are capable of uh, reproducing with other species as well. Uh, females of other species, in, uh, not just humans. So those are the type of humans. So these appear to be... Yeah, these appear to be the low-leveled overlord goblins. Because they don't, uh, as far as I have seen up till now, I don't see any um, too intelligent behavior in them. And they're more interested in meat or rather than anything, uh, like eating humans. <clears throat> uh, but we haven't seen any females come into contact with them, so I can't be sure. Uh, but our characters have not said anything regarding the matter either. So I'm gonna have to go with the... Uh, that they are overlord low level goblins the two of you turn on a boost boost of speed and soon the outer wall of the castle looms before you it is about 10 feet high and crumbling you realize with horror that there are no holes on this side that are large enough to fit through meanwhile Ragnald, a fast runner than yourself has disappeared around the north corner of the wall an arrow whizzes past your head and you look back and see at least four pairs of glowing eyes Uh, I'm gonna jump the wall because that seems much easier than follow Ragnar considering I'm not as fast I'm not as athletic as him uh, and I do not want to waste my mana because that's going to be an essential thing later in the game you stay your course towards the wall and with an arcane word you leap into the air up up you go like a giant grasshopper over the top you made it but now you are falling down, down into the castle courtyard. You hit the ground hard, but you roll with it. Fortunately, the neglecting, neglected uh, courtyard grass is nearly as tall as you are, acts as a cushion. There is a ladder nearby that, that you climb to get up to the battlements. Uh, there are four goblins at the base of the wall, chattering angrily. 
One of them begins climbing up the rotten rock. You decide that this is a good place to take a stand. There is a lot of loose rock at the top of the wall. You're not particularly strong thanks to your inactive life as a wizard. However, you expect you could push a few large rocks down over this climber. On the other hand, they're all out in the open and your spells would certainly be effective. What do you do? Last time I did fry them all. But as it turns out, there are a lot of goblins. So even if you destroy them, they would actually die if you use fry them all. But the preferable thing to do would be to push, push the rocks. I'm not sure if we are capable of pushing the rocks. I don't want to lose my life, but I want to do that. Got medieval on him. <laughs> the technology used was primitive and the actions wasn't pretty or subtle. But you can't argue with the results. One point, one coin, one luck. All right. What is a coin? And what is the point? I know one luck. Luck is a setting that they're going to discuss later. But as of right now, there's nothing to be... Absolutely. Why waste your magical energy mana? When uh, instead you can use the time... Time on a trick of hurling rocks down upon your enemy. Very medieval of you. Lord of Castles used various different things to... Uh, keep uh, people from climbing up, sieging the city. Because, you know, it's uh, very difficult to break down the goddamn uh, main entrance door without any proper siege weapons. Um, so, if they're just uh, climbing up the walls, then uh, a lot of castles did different things. They would pour hot oil, boiling water. They would uh, use tar. They would, like, cover the wall side on the, with tar and just set it aflame. And, well, the wall is made out of wood, I um, mean, stone. So, it's not going to burn and hopefully the gate is also made out of metal so it's not going to burn either so it just makes a wall of flame so you can't really you know go up and throwing rocks is obviously common spears arrows and whatnot soon enough there are some large slew stones nearby which you push down upon your climbing attacker the first one misses but he looks up just in time to get a melon sized rock right to the face making a watery, crunchy sound. He falls down onto the earth where he lies motionless. The other three look up, scream in rage and back off. Suddenly feel the battlement boards below you shake to the unmistakable rhythm of footfalls. God, they got behind me, you think. Charging along the runway is the shadow of a tall, lanky man carrying something, a bow. Regnal, you sigh in relief. He must have found another way in. Regnal leans over the wall, see... Seemingly without even aiming, let's lose an arrow. One of the little levels below fall to the ground, squirming with an arrow to the uh, in its chest. To the chest would have been uh, much more uh, fun to read, but whatever. The others scatter back towards the forest with their eyes turned away. They make difficult targets in the scant moonlight. Nevertheless, your friend takes one more down before the rest make safely to the woods. We have stuck Terra into their advance party, but they will call for reinforcement. We have the wall. Can we hold it? We could go in. You point to the castle beyond the courtyard. The castle is three stories tall, or at least it ha had been before the top layer partially collapsed. Second story is barely any better. The fortress is as lifeless and still as a painting. Still, you wonder if anyone is looking back at you from the dark windows and arrow slits of the ruins. Okay, so uh, we are going to. Yeah, okay. I'm going to enter the castle because, uh, considering how big a wall can be, if you have never seen a castle wall apparently for some reason, uh, I don't think two men can mount a defense. Even if it's 10 feet high, so it's not that biggest wall ever. But it's still, like, I don't think. Uh, Two dudes can uh, manage mana wall. That's difficult. I mean, it it have it will have to be an automated wall for two dudes to manage it. End of the castle. Two are not enough to defend all four walls. See, away away to the keep. You shout. You run across the courtyard and open the large wooden double doors, which shriek on rusty hinges. Unlocked. This may be a trap, my friend. We best be on our guard. Once inside, Regnal snaps and bars the door. The entrance chamber is large with a high vaulted ceiling. The stone walls are cracked and flaking. The ground is strewn with stone rub with loose rubble. The air is stale. Aside from 
double doors behind you there are north wooden what it is stale aside from the double doors behind you that's the one we came in from there are closed wooden doors on the north east and west walls okay it is not long before the front door begins to rattle violently through a nearby arrow slit you can see green glowing eyes and the glint of axes chopping away at the door not sure how long the barred portal will hold them that's a really cool way to say door the barred portal that is that is fancy that is really fancy i like that man i'm getting an illusion uh, looking at the stairs in my house that they are like left side uh, leaning downwards it looks really weird from this angle it's clearly an illusion though uh, hallucinating i guess hmm uh, ragnar wants to hide deeper in the castle on the other hand this place smells of death it might be prudent to take a few seconds to investigate the rooms do rooms and doors i'm going to search the rooms and doors cuz i don't want to just run in i mean the door should hold for a few seconds and i mean few minutes and we should be able to search first of all you motion to ragnar to check the east door you inspect the ground and see there has been some traffic through here traffic through here see some of the tracks on the dusty floor appear to be from a human sized shoe or a boot while others appear to be from bare feet far too large to be from men none of the tracks appear to belong to goblin listening you can't hear anything over the goblins thumping and screaming outside you direct the light of a lantern to the north eastern door and are about to turn towards the eastern door where something catches your attention was that an eye you wonder you think you caught a glimpse of a glistening eyeball through a rotting hole in the northern door well, that's uh, ominous all right casually as though just taking another look around you sweep your lantern right over the door again pa pausing for just an instant at that spot yes that was an eye you're being watched although your glimpse of it was fleeting you could tell the eye did not belong to a human the white the white of the orb is pink with blood while retina is pitch black and dark the uh, pitch black and large you would like to get a better look at the creature there is a minor spell you normally use to magically open doors from a distance you find it easy as opening doors yourself <laughs> man my guy is lazy as shit he doesn't even open doors himself as long uh, as long as the door is unlocked you could use this lazy wizard spell to open the eye door without being too close on the other hand that may frighten or anger whatever that eye belongs to perhaps you could just talk to it maybe you can join forces against the goblins alternatively you might be able to hurl a bolt of fire through that eye hole not an easy shot but you but you have a element of surprise finally there's the running option a choice that has been keeping wizard alive for thousands of years <laughs> that is fun mm. i don't know man see if it's a red eye if it has blood streaming red eye then it's more than likely hostile because uh, you know um, in a normal um, rpg this shouldn't be that big of a deal but these goblins seem to be either overlord level 1 goblins or uh, dark fantasy goblins and in a dark fantasy shit goes wild shit goes wild i mean yeah it, these are definitely wild uh, wild uh, fan, uh, dark fantasy goblins because they said they're coming for the meat they want to eat us right um in a normal one they would usually show like they would just kill us take our stuff or don't even take our stuff just leave but they said they want to eat us then uh, this could be more than likely dark fantasy so yeah i'm going to i'm going to assume that that's that so i'm going to open the door i'm going to use one mana with a wave of your hand you open the door the light of your stream uh, streams into the doorway to reveal a huge pale monster stooping over it is naked hairless with the exception of the cubic area you cannot readily see the gender of the creature but that's the least of your concerns <laughs> oh that's good that's good I mean, does it have that small of a penis? That or does it have that big of a bush? Or does it have that small of a penis? Until unless it's not even male and it's like female, so it's just like a huge bush covering his vagina. Oh, now what is it? 
Uh, let's see the gender banana. The giant spike club it grabs tightly in one hand, and the melon sized rock it holds in the other are at the top of your mind. Navel's tongue, it's an og. I'm not sure what a navel is. I'm guessing navel. Navel stung. I'm guessing that's like uh, Neville Longbottom. <laughs> no, I'm thinking like some god or something. Uh, right. Ragnall curses, but he knows that this. He, but he he knows this. You do not know, but you are willing to take his word for it. Okay, so we don't know it's an og. I guess we have never seen an og, ogre, whatever you want to call it, og ogre. I guess I'll call it ogre. Um. You're willing to take his word for it. The creature appears to be surprised at sudden being exposed, and you see a nasty looking sta uh, nasty stare. Nasty looks starting to spread over its face. You need to act fast. Blast it. Use a charm. Run. Okay. And let the goblins in and run. See, I've never heard of uh, in a dark fantasy. Uh, different species working together. I mean, they could work together in like an overlord setting. As I said, they, they even have that scene where goblins and ogres are working together. But I'm guessing that considering this is a dark fantasy, it's not uh, they're not willing to work together uh, and everything seems to kill each other. So I think I'm going to use, I'm going to let the goblins in and run. Cause let me think. Uh, the north door. So it's about to come out. That's for sure. Because it wants. It's clearly. It clearly wants to kill us. So I could. Uh, so it could probably attack me. No, I think if I let the goblins in and run, uh, and we both run out, then um, the first focus of it will be the goblins. Let in and run. A clever move. You're a tricky one. One point, uh, one point, one, what? One point one coin. I okay, put two commas there for whatever reason, and one luck typo. Morale increases two, mana decreases one. You yell at, yell at Ragnall to follow you and lead him towards the eastern door. As you go, you cast a minor spell, knocking the bolt from the braces of the front double doors. Like a tidal wave crashing on the beach, now a heap of goblins fall into the room. Creatures one on top of another. A chorus of glee erupts from their fang mouths. Arrows and spear fly over and between the goblins in front and hitting a few of them. What? Arrows and spears fly over and between the goblins in front, hitting a few of them. Okay, so uh, I'm guessing like the goblins in the back for shooting uh, arrows or something, arrows and spears, and they would hit the front goblins. Unfortunately, you are struck by a goblin. Uh, you are struck by a spear too, although it's only a flesh wound. Considering my life didn't go down. Meanwhile, the ogre roars in rage, throwing his rock at the first goblin, striking in it in the chest with such a nasty crunching sound that you will that you know the goblin will never get up. Ragnar, you nearly collide in your haste through the eastern portal. You hope there is no ogre waiting behind this door too. Once once through, you slam the door closed. From the entrance chamber you just left, you hear goblins' yips of triumph turn into scream of terror, which are immediately drowned out by an earth-shaking snarl. Next, you hear the sharp slapping of flesh against flesh, and then the wet sound of bodies ripping apart. A fine way to handle a goblin horde. Uh, oh, sorry. Handle a horde of goblins, you think. Despite your desperate situation, you smile to yourself as you run. You run from one room to next, uh, getting as far as away as you can from that ogre or whatever it is. It's not much of a housekeeper, how anyhow. The castle is full of giant cowbells and broken furniture. Finally, you enter a larger room, a dining room, as evidenced by. <clears throat> and there are clearly people here because we saw footsteps. And considering if the ogre was living here, he wouldn't exactly, he wouldn't exactly be as uh, stable as a moon surface. So. I'm guessing the people here, there are people here, I'm not sure what type of people, considering there's an ogre living, I'm not guessing very good people, but whatever, maybe just adventurers, who knows, um, a fine way to handle a horde, that, that, uh, beyond that point, until we enter the castle, that's the point I played it to, but 
that's the point i played it and uh, last time i just went in and uh, <laughs> the og the ogre it fucking smashed me in the face with its uh, fucking uh, spike club and it took out a lot of health that's the point i played too last time um just to check what the game's like and now let's continue okay you run from room to room yes this is done this is done finally you enter a larger room a dining room as evidenced by a long wooden table and two fireplaces you mention to regnal to stop you both listen faintly you can hear the far off sounds of battle from behind you you can't leave that way you think of course you really want to leave anyway there may be treasure about your steps slow and really you're talking about treasure at the moment but then again we are adventurers that's why that's why we came out even to get treasure there may be treasure about your your steps slow to a crawl as you try to make up your mind what to do is then you hear something else labored breathing is that crying what do you do oh boy oh boy here we go <clears throat> there's a labored breathing what's a labored breathing is that like a labors breathing it's like a heavy breathing that's uh, tired in some form I'm not sure what a labored breathing is supposed to be all right mm. and crying i'm usually would prefer i'm out of here i kind of do want to do that i'm not sure what do you do investigate the sign sound i'm out of here i don't get it i'm not sure what am i supposed to do let me think let me think um let me see from my past experiences what happens when i ignore something i mean sometimes it good ha- good happens like i ignored the fire uh, in considering the case of the goblins and that ended up me not getting hit by a goblin party uh, but then again i didn't ignore the ogre and that led to me not getting destroyed by the ogre and what do i do man you know what let's go let's go find what it is for glory and the loot you think to yourself as you take the lead you realize oh man that kind of scared me <laughs> uh you quickly realize the sound seems to be coming from this very room you creep over to the other end of the dining hall and see a young woman sitting on a ground chained to a fireplace rock back rocking back and forth and sobbing rocking back and forth regnal was right but regnal didn't say anything what are you talking about regnal was right did he say we should go inside deeper into the castle or something i don't remember him saying anything or did i read his dialogue and thought it was my dialogue i'm not sure i don't remember him saying anything what do you mean regnal was right that has an image of a woman getting chained up uh that confirms that there are people here because if a woman is here then she must be getting fed by someone but then again it could be a trap man the, the fuck some type of demon or something that's like shaped as a woman or something uh whatever let's let's see her cries breaks off and she looks up at you with an expression of fear that quickly turns to surprise who who are you she asks you tell her your aims and then you are here to smite evil while making your fortunes <laughs> that's hilarious all right this brings a smile to her face a pretty smile you suspect although it's hard to tell under all the dirt smudge on her face she gives her names as siba kaiba um i'm not sure i'm going to call her kaiba uh, and says that there is a key to her chains on the table sure enough besides cracked and dusty china is a small brass key as you set ab- as you set about unlocking her she tells you that she is a merchant's daughter who was traveling who was traveling with her father's trade caravan when it was attacked by a mighty ogre with a small band of priests of an evil god wearing dark cloaks those of her party not killed in the in <clears throat> i need to i need to drink something when my fucking i'm parched i'm parched 
whatever okay um the reason i'm recording this early in the morning is because um by the time like like it's 11 o'clock or something around here the fucking entire city is going to be woken and there's going to be too much sound to record it's just too much like i'm sitting in the like the most inside room of my house and i'm i'm pretty damn sure that the mic still picked up whatever shit that was going outside earlier people driving engines and screaming for no reason and i, I need to uh, i am you general i'm going to shift soon enough hopefully in my new room i will be able to put some things up so that uh, the sound can be suppressed a little bit i'm going to buy those uh, those things that you play the sound absorption pads whatever they're called um the youtubers place all over their uh, rooms i'm going to buy that and put a few of, of them up so that it's a bit more uh, less screamish like can you hear that i can certainly hear that that's a fucking i don't know ice cream wagon going outside <laughs> it's loud as fuck no right, whatever at least they closed it off those of our party not killed in the initial attack were taken prisoner chained up in this room one by one they were taken away the prisoner never to return they took my father kaya no doubt he is slain but i must try to find him will you help me you ask her if she has any idea where her father or the others might be but she knows little of the rest of the castle ragnar takes you aside and says ought we take her to safety and then look for her father on our own she will be in danger traveling with us you agree with having some you agree with having some half starved uh, unarmed merchant's daughter tripping along behind you will only get her killed but where is safety last time you checked the grotto you were crawling with goblins according to her the castle residents are not very good hosts what do you do i don't think uh, hiding her would be a good idea i would like to bring her with me man she will get killed if she trips hide her and move on let's escort her manners matter your mother taught you well <clears throat> what's with the typo error they're doing again and again with the comma i think they just copy pasted it again and again uh, in the achievements Kaiva seems like a nice and a wom- young woman but as a merchant's daughter she is not a very good addition to the adventuring party so you are eager to escort her out of the castle as quickly as possible between regnal's cl- uh, clinking chainmail armor kaiba's incessant sniffing and muttering about her father the three of you are not the stealthy party you wish to be after some searching you find a hole in the wall of a castle large enough for a human to fit through uh regnal gives you a boost up to the hole to look out uh navel stung you curse in your head green glowing eyes dot the courtyard outside you got bad news uh you get down and tell the other tell the others the bad news what the fuck what my life decrease suddenly i didn't even, man fucking dogs like yeah, one thing ends and the other thing starts like god damn i hope the mic's not picking it up very clearly but i can certainly hear dogs fucking barking and growling and more bikes all right so my life decreased by 3 as you describe what you saw there's a sudden jolt of numbing cold in your back you cry out in pain and turn to see a cloaked man barely visible in the light of the stuttering lantern in his hand he's pointing at you with his other hand hand perhaps this is one of the evil sp- uh, priest kaya spoke Kaiba spoke so, spoke off. What the fuck am I doing? I'm stuttering because I'm like my throat is clogged. Um, a bit of cold, as usual. As you slump back against the uh, wall, Kaiba cower cowers in the man. This fucking music. Can you stop? Who is this outside? Like really? And I cannot record in peace like at all. Like every single time I sit down to record, there's something going on outside my house. It's like ridiculous. As you slump back against the wall, Kaiba covers in the corner. Ragnar unleashes, unsheathes his sword and charges. The cloaked man runs. By the time you recover from the pain and stand up, Ragnar is walking briskly back into the chamber. The sneaky devil eluded me, he says. 
and then curses. I would I would bet my last copper he is off gathering allies to come back for us. We must move on, you say. As you hasten away from that wing of the ruin, the three of you now Kaiba should hide for now. The three of you agree that Kaiba should hide for now. There are tons of hiding places in this ruin. You find a nice pile of rubble for her to hide behind. So hide behind several rooms away. Stay still, quiet here. We will return. Well, if we do not return by morning, escape as best as you can. You instruct her. Clever. Engel says as you leave. As you leave her. If her abductors find her missing, they will not expect her to remain in the castle. With luck, they will leave the castle altogether to search. And we can explore unhindered, you say with a smile. The castle is quiet and dark. You walk with a wide hallway that branches into two directions. One direction is covered in a thick layer of dust, uh, while the other is covered in footprints. You decide that it would be wise to get a lay of the land before looking for any trouble. Despite the faint smell of rotting flesh from the dusty hallways, you decide that it would be wise to go with this way first. Less monsters, more treasure, or at least you hope. You have left. You have left. Oh, okay, okay. You have kept your lantern hooded, allowing um, only allowing slivers of light out. After all, you want to remain st stealthy. The way is dim. However, you find yourself tripping over rubble and odd type pieces of furniture. There might be something far worse ahead for you, for you to turn run into. Too bad you can't see in the dark like a goblin. Do you? Just unhook the lantern because considering this level, I don't think there's gonna be too many people around you. Since you appear to be entering a vacant part of the castle, you expect your light will not attract enemy attention. So you unhook your lantern to see your way clearly. As you move along, the cobwebs thicken and thicken. Spider. Ragnar yelps. He points his sword up at the ceiling. There's an enormous hairy spider suspended by a mass of yarn, thick webs. The webs are dotted with uh, small silky cocoons you suspect might encase rats or some small prey. With trembling fingers, Ragnar sheathes his sword. His sh Ragnar sheathes his sword. Why is it such a tongue twister to say that? Um, and unslings his bow. He takes in a big breath. Oh my god, I read he takes in a big dick. <laughs> I read it in my mind that he takes a big dick. It was, it's like uh, he takes in a big and then when he go down it says draws. So I kind of read it at dicks. It was like he takes in big dicks. So I was like, what? He takes in big breath and as he fits an arrow, draws back the string and fires. The, st the spider flails its leg long then I cannot read. My tongue is twisting all over the fucking place. The spider fail, flails its long legs for a moment, then drops out of the web onto the floor with the third. The two of you move on, taking extra care of, extra care to watch the ceiling. Eventually, the two of you make your way to a spiral staircase, going up. The upper regions of a foul place like this are safer than the lower levels, says Ragnarum. Why in Neville's tongue would that be? The upper regions of a file place like this are safer than the lower levels. Why? Why Neville's tongue would that be? Shrugs. Do not ask me what is the mind of the fiends of the evil hearted beast. Perhaps they prefer the darkness and stagnant air below the ground. You look up the stairway, sigh. Well, perhaps you can get a view of the courtyard from up here. Up there. I would like to know just how far the goblins lurk out there. Ragnar leads the way up the stairs, which lead into a small tower. Moonlight filters in through the cracks between and around two studded windows. This room is finely furnished and otherwise much more nicely kept than the rest of the castle you visited so far. There is a small bed, still made. Why the fucking... Uh, the fucking brightness is too high. Uh, there is a small bed still made. On one end, uh, an ornate table and on a... I thought I was on recording. I was like, fuck, I didn't record. Um, on one end, an ornate table and a bookshelf. On the table is an open fair, fairy tale book and a gold embossed hand mirror. Seeing loot, you forget about the windows and the potential view of the courtyard. You pick up the mirror to inspect it. Gazing at your reflection, you decide you look pretty good, all things considered. You, uh, you brush cobwebs from your wavy brown hair. You smile. 
you are happy to see that your teeth are looking particularly good of course you deserve nice teeth since unlike most people you know you take care of them every morning you wipe your teeth with a cloth <laughs> dipped into a cleaning concoction consisting of vinegar salt a little sand and a small measure of your own ruined what the own oh, urine what type of fucking concoction is that why would you brush your teeth with that what i mean that may make your teeth clean because it's going to rip the fucking top layer of your teeth it's going to rub, rub out the enamel of your teeth you know uh, people say that when you wake up you should brush your teeth that is untrue what you need to do is uh, increase the basicity of your mouth the thing is when you eat something and it gets stuck in between your teeth even in particle form uh, bacteria would eat that and then release acid so when uh, bacteria release acid on your teeth um, it's going to end up uh, you know rotting away at your teeth it's going to destroy the enamel that then affect the teeth itself so when you brush the teeth it's not the activity of rubbing your teeth with a brush to remove the remove the bacteria off of your teeth and it's not is neither the uh, the fact that uh, you cannot drink or eat before you uh, brush your teeth that doesn't matter because if you eat something and it gets rubs off your uh, teeth bacteria will stick to the food and go inside your stomach and considering this hcl in the stomach uh, the bacteria are going to die instantly and or should die instantly uh, the the tooth uh, the toothpaste or and any other thing that you put in your mouth that is uh, regarded as cleaning the teeth um, are usually basic things so in this concoction um, i cannot say anything out of all any of these is okay except for salt nacl is basic uh, with uh, when mixed with water i think i don't remember but i'm pretty damn sure nacl with water is basic so you could brush your teeth or gargle with the salty water to clean your teeth by increasing the basicity of your mouth but i don't think any other thing is okay vinegar is acidic um, urine is usually acidic and uh, it's definitely not going to be basic if it is basic then there's an issue and a sand sand is not okay because you know it's going to rub the enamel off your teeth and it's going to taste like shit so uh, no the only thing i can uh, be okay with in this matter is salt you're about to pull yourself away from the mirror and put it in your bag when you glimpse a translucent skull with thin wispy hair just behind you in the reflection you spin around and see not a skull but a young girl floating a few feet in the air her pale face fixed on you regnal sees her too as evidenced by him running down the stairs how did, how dare you touch what is mine the ghostly girl shouts you back up reflexively put the mirror back on the table you've heard tales of a powerful ghost that can suck the life right out of you and wonder if the, this girl is one of those what do you do all right so we got one of those classic scenes where you look into a mirror and there's like something standing behind you and it's like a ghost or something um so i can run for the stairs which is probably not a good idea considering she might be able to like close the door or something so that would be really awkward um protection from evil spells yes we can do that we can certainly do that um i've never really seen someone apologizing to a ghost So let's take the mannerful approach considering she didn't just attack me straight up and actually said that how dare you touch what is mine so I'm going to apologize I I apologize my lady <laughs> what did I say like that I I apologize my lady you say uh it is only that this is such a fine mirror and I wish to admire it she glares at you for a moment and then hard expressions on her transparent face softens I am the Duchess Inverness. My father, the Duke, gave me this as a gift. We have heard stories of Duke Inverness, the mysterious circumstances around the demise of his house. Despite your fear, you feel a pang of sadness from his daughter, who now shimmers before you, trapped in this world. Uh, and these books, why they look like excellent uh, stories in the used grammar. Read that one to me. The girl commands. Of course, my lady. You answer. Luckily for you, as a wizard, you know how to read. 
You pick up the book of fairy tales from the desk and begin on the first page. He stops you and demands that you read her uh, the story about the unicorn. With trembling hands, you page through the book, eventually find the story and begin reading. The ghost floats up behind you as though to peer down at the sh pictures. Why am I reading it like that, man? I'm just stuttering. I need to get something to eat as well as usual. I'm too fucking hungry. I didn't eat last night and I haven't eaten anything since the morning. Right, where were we? Uh, you feel a slight chill on your shoulder. Sometime later, you look up from her book and see Ragnar. Oh, hold on, what happened? I don't know. I originally find this story. Right. Sometime later, sometime later, you look up from her book and see Ragnar peeking around the corner of the, of the stairway at you. You shake your head slightly at him, then return your attention to the book. In the story, Unicorn taps her hoof against the wall in a castle, and a secret passage opens up. As you read this little ghost girl smiles and says there is a secret passage in this castle as well. It is a foul place, a place where people are taken never to return. Where is this secret passage you speak of, you say? In the father's library, there is a statue. Push the arm of the statue down, she explains. You are intrigued by this and wish to ask her more but she points the book impatiently so you get back to the story. Upon finishing the story, the girl demands you read her another. You wonder how long she might keep this up. The time means nothing to her after all. You would like to get back to Ragnar and what about the Kaiba's father? Rescuing a merchant might mean a fine reward. And there's Kaiba herself, of course. You would like to find her before something else does. What do you do? Attempt to excuse yourself. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, oh, gold increase 50. Nice. Beautiful and gracious duchess, might I ask your full name? You ask. Gabriella, Duchess Gabriella of Inverness, she answered. My lady, you bow. I beg your pardon, but there is a young woman in the castle below who requires my assistance. There are evil men. I suspect they threaten her life. A maiden in distress? Why do you dally here then? Be gone. You mean, you need no further encouragement. You step lightly towards the door. Wait, her voice chills you, but you unwillingly turn back. Take this, she says. The gold-trimmed mirror floats off of a table over to you. I cannot see myself in it anymore, she says softly. Generosity befits a duchess. I thank you most humbly. You bow low and then leave. You find Ragnar around the corner of the stair, his sword at the ready. He begins asking you questions, but you put up your hand another time, you say. You have reached a checkpoint. Uh, later. Nice. Um... I think checkpoints work this way that uh, well checkpoint works the way checkpoint works. <laughs> Why am I explaining checkpoints? The two of you continue. Is it okay? Okay, it is recording. I was like, what? Um, the two of you continue through the castle. Occasionally, hear distant things, a shout, a crash, even voices. Soon, you come to a door with light streaming out through its crack. You open it ever so slightly, peek in. You see a coke. Cloaked figure frantically placing. You see a cloaked figure frantically placing back and forth. Pacing back and forth. You cannot see his face, but his hands appear to be human. You catch glimpses of his naked torso under the cloak. It it is black with tattoos. You think you make out at least one of the symbol to be the symbol of Nerul, a god of undead. This reminds you of the tattoo body of a man. Hung in the city square only a few months ago. He was believed to be an evil priest of Nerul and was accusing of terrible and was accused of terrible crimes such as raising zombies. Such priests are able to harvest power from their deities and cast dangerous spells. However, you have the element of surprise. I would like to spy for a bit actually, I'm not sure. Let me see. So he's just walking about, minding his own business. Attack without spells never gonna end well for me. Attack with spell. I don't think charm would work on him. Just spy for a bit. Uh, where is where is she? Uh, she? How could she escape? The man murders to himself. The sacrifice must uh, must appease him. He whispers. Uh, he then starts to he starts towards the door. You have cracked open. Quickly, you move away out of sight and listen for a few seconds. You hear nothing, not even footsteps. 
What? Does she have a Okay, so he's coming towards the door. And we move away from the door. Out of sight. We listen for a few seconds and we hear nothing. So he just suddenly stopped. So either he just thought of something which is highly unlikely. Considering he's just thinking about the the chick. Where has she gone? I think he knows we are here. I'm not sure. I'm not getting to attack with all spell. I'm not. Maybe I'm not. Yeah, you know what? Attack with, attack with spells. Let's attack. Not to Ragnall. The two of you burst into the room. Your quarry appears young. Although his face is scarred. He looks at you with the expression of a man who is presently soiling himself. <laughs> or he shit himself. He ducks back at Ragnall's swing sword. Or not fast enough. His blade slashes his shoulder. He tries to run chanting something that you recognize as the beginning of his will. You strike back at him with a bolt of flame that engulfs his cloak in fire. He screams and thrashes just before Ragnall cuts him down with a great cleave. Hmm. Perhaps now that I reflect upon this, we should have tried to keep him alive. We still know not of the fate of the rest of the caravan, you say with a frown. In battle, there is no time for such for regret. In order to scratch on us this time, I call that victory, declares Ragnall. Okay. Should I call him Ragnold? Or just Ragnald is fine? Because it's much more convenient for me to call him Ragnald. Now that you are in the room, you can see that you are in living quarters. There is a bed near the wall, a good sized chest in the corner. Who does the chest belong to? Hopefully a beautiful woman. <laughs> They're probably talking about a treasure chest or whatever. Uh, treasure. You think as you run over to try to lift, uh, lift the lid. Locked. The Nurulian priest did not die quietly. So perhaps you should have uh, Ragnall smash the lid with his sword and then get out of there. And then get out of here. On the other hand, there ought to be a key somewhere. Maybe you could take a few seconds to check what do you want. Let's look for a key. Because uh, I don't think there will be a trap in the chest. Like who would place a trap chest in their own room? Like if you walk into your room and uh, you completely forget uh, that you <laughs> placed a fucking uh, trap on the chest you own. And you fucking destroy yourself with the uh, trap chest. Uh, so I don't think it will be trapped. But um, there could be a thing that would alert others if you break the chest. Like uh, there's like a spell that would automatically like sound an alarm or something. So let's search around for a bit. Oh, I got 40 gold. Nice. You stay guard while I search. You say to Reginald. You kick the body of the priest over. The corpse is a bloody mess but you don't have time to be dainty about it. The man is nude other than the cloak and the golden amulet around his neck. The amulet is an unholy symbol of Nerul, the god of undead. You would never keep such an evil thing, but it's coated in gold. So you would, you could have it melted down. You rummage through its sticky cloak. <laughs> you rummage through his sticky cock. That's what I read. <laughs> My mind is fucking dirty as shit sometimes. Um, you rummage through his sticky cloak. Sure enough, you find a key. You trot over to the chest, key in hand. The key has the same hue of metal as the lock. You're op optimistic that it will fit. You're fumbling with the key when you hear something off in the distance. A chill goes down your spine. Are more coming? Did you hear the priest cry out? What do you do? No, it's a key, so I don't think there should be trap things in it. And considering the priests are coming, I would like to take my chances here. Even though I don't have the life for it, life 9. But use the key now. Oh, we got 80 gold. <coughs> um, what kind of booby trap is going to spring on someone with the proper key? You think to yourself. You carefully insert the key into the lock. It's a fit. You close your eyes as you turn the key. The top of the chest pops open as though on a spring and nothing happens. You exhale and relief inside is a bag full of gold pieces, some platinum engraved china. What is that platinum engraved china? Is that china bone? Is it like one of those uh, bone uh, made cups? Is that what it is? Like a china bone cup that is uh, engraved with platinum? Is that it? How could we tell it's platinum? Like... Platinum and silver like 
very similar. Well, obviously, platinum is expensive, but uh, they look same. So how would you be able to tell? It's like that's weird, but all right. You exhale in relief. Inside is a bag. Uh, okay, that's, that's right. Uh, you gather up your loot, hurry out of the room. The two of you have only taken a few steps into the dark hallway while you see flickering light up ahead. You could run back into the room and hide and prepare a fireball to cast down the hall or cast a legion to try and distract whoever is coming. Hmm. Best thing would be to hide in the room. Like they could come in and they would be like, "Oh, our priest is dead, and the chest is looted, and let's let's run." So I'm gonna hide in the room. God damn it, ads! All right, so we decided to hide in the room. Um, hide. You whisper to Ragnar as you run back into the room and dive behind the bed. Meanwhile, Ragnar presses again himself against the wall behind the open door. It seems like you you've been in your what? It seems like you've been in your hiding place only for a few seconds when you hear hurried footsteps in the room. Well, Deck, he is slain. You hear a, a tweedy voice say, "Burned and st uh, slashed by the looks of it, and his chest is pillaged." You hear another voice say, "This one, this one, close by." What the fuck? You he okay, you hear another voice say this one close by. Okay, so the voice is near us. You imagine whoever it is glaring. You imagine whoever it is glaring down on the empty treasure chest on the other side of the bed. You know that there are at least two men out there. I'm gonna attack with dagger. I mean, if if he's like bending over, so his neck is like in my clear sight. I should be able to hit him. Please hit him. Fuck. What did good gold go up? What the fuck? Uh, you leap up from behind the bed with your dagger drawn. The nearest Prudian priest uh, gasps in uh, surprise. You hear slay from the other priest and you dodge not fast enough. The painful cold radiates out from where you are struck by his dark magic. You jump up onto the bed and launch yourself at the nearest priest who shrieks as you stab him over and over. Meanwhile, Ragnarok has made quick work of the other one with his long sword. You take the time to search the bodies and find golden unholy symbols medallion on each of them as well as one fine silver dagger not bad for 20 seconds of work i tire of looting corpses let us be off to find the merchants and buy them and buy them a glorious reward you exclaim i need to get more life man my mana is my life and both going down but my gold is going up i guess let's calculate it i mean six uh, 10 pieces of gold is equal to six months of a dude's salary so 240 pieces of gold is like 24 times that so that's like 12 years worth of uh, wage for a uh, fucking labor 12 years worth of fucking gold 12 years i mean you could work for 12 years and that's this is how much you will make and we made that in like a night god darn I mean, goddamn, whatever. Take the time to search this symbol. Okay, that's done. That's an attire of looting goes Okay, so let's uh, move on to Kaiba. Uh, let's rescue her and also go to that uh, secret passageway that um, the Duchess told us about. The Duchess's ghost. What is the Duchess exactly? Like, I don't get it. Like, hold on. There was a, there's a Dutch, right? Um... And then her wife should be Duchess. But uh, they said it was a young girl. And she said her father, the Dutch. Oh, the father, the Duke. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Her father is a Duke. And she is a Duchess. Okay. Now uh, that makes a bit more sense. I'm not exactly sure the Western hierarchy exactly how it works. I mean, I know there's a king, then the royal family. Then within the noble ranks, there's like a load of ranks like Dutch and Duke and all of these things. I'm not exactly sure what they are like. So I'm not, I can't exactly say precisely what she means by calling herself Duchess and her father Duke. But there's that. Uh, I would like to get more health. Hopefully um, the thing I read about, uh, the luck feature. I think there's like a luck feature. There's like you get a few extra points to spend, 
and uh, you can increase your life or your mana using them so i would prefer to increase my life considering i'm making stupid decisions again and again i i thought like if he's bending over and i'm behind the bed so i should be able to like stab him like immediately but apparently not uh, all right um so we are going to continue this uh, next time uh, the chapter is way too long. I didn't expect it to be this long. I mean, I, I, I was thinking it would be over like 15 minutes or something. And I don't even know how long. I, I'm at least been recording for like an hour or so. So, uh, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe and leave a comment. Share the video. That's really helpful. Like, um, I can't tell you how much uh, sharing would help because as of now no one's really watching this video at the moment but any, if anyone does do share it anywhere it doesn't matter where you share it twitter facebook or like your whatsapp or whatever you use or just tell your friend or something that would exceptionally help me and also in the description there would be my twitter and my dtube account um, we don't know just yet i have another channel uh, on dtube that's another website um, on DTube, there's like a, it's different from YouTube because they don't use ads. They use some uh, some sort of a cryptocurrency, and because of that, uh, there's no restriction of what you upload. Henceforth, you can upload complete NSFW stuff. And I play some uh, hentai games there. Uh, I'm currently playing Haramasa Simulator at the moment, and I'm going to be continue playing that in a month or two again when my uh, new PC arrives. Hopefully. Uh, that would happen soon enough. So uh, thanks for watching and bye bye